Hi friends, today we're going to have a little chit chat about Pod by the Breeders, one of Kurt Cobain's favorite albums and what I think is the Breeders' best album. So if we just go through the track list, number one is Glorious. Now, that is what we call an album opener because it sets a tone for the whole album, but it's not just another song like, oh, I don't know what songs I want to put, or I want to put these songs in, let's just put them in alphabetical order. No, the right songs on this album are placed at the right time. Now what it does doesn't do is make a big statement and then leave you hanging because one song can't carry a whole album. You need a really big song as the first song on the album when your writing's been slacking a bit and you had a couple ideas and you may put them together to get the album out by Christmas. But no, the breeders don't have to do that because number two is Doe. Now, Doe is most definitely my favorite song on the whole album, because how can it not be? Now, like the the like the medley, you know, is one thing, but the lyrics. That is what we call good writing. And I quote, he knows it's good, it's real, it's pretty. It's not a deep emotional song. It's not like Stone Cold by Demi Lovato. But the readers don't need that, because I felt more emotion from that one line than I did from any deep love song from any pop singer. Like, sorry Taylor Swift, but it's true. That one line gets the message across. And the, what that message is, is interpretational, but that's art. True art has the ability to be seen in more ways than one, my friends. And number three, happiness is a warm gun. Now, it takes something to cover a Beatles song. Not like, I'm going to go sing Here Comes the Sun and then record it on my YouTube channel after, put it on my YouTube channel after I record it on my Nokia. Like, no. This was their debut studio album, and they put a Beatles cover on it. And not only that, but they did it well, and it fits in right with all the other songs. So for that, well done. <laughs> and number four is O. Now, at first glance, you might think this is just a time filler because the lyrics are, like, repetitive and few and far between. But if you're in that mindset, this is where I convince you that with all due respect, you are wrong. Because number one, the violin was perfectly added to the instrumentals and expressed emotions that I've never seen from humans in person. Not only that, but the lyrics are kind of beautiful, like, in a natural beauty kind of way. Not like, I need to fit a word here that rhymes, but more like, I'm just saying a few lines that make sense and it's okay if you don't understand them because it means everything to me and then like the way they're expressed like kim's voice crack like near like three-fourths in just shows like vulnerability like this is the emotional song that has you connect with the artist it's perfectly placed and it's perfectly utilized and it's oh so important and then number five i read somewhere that it was about a fetus that survived an abortion attempt it's not my favorite song on the album, but they kind of redeem themselves when they get to number six when I was a painter. The lyrics are pretty blunt on this one, but not to the demise of the song. Because it adds, like, authenticity, which I find the whole album just be bound in. So maybe it has something to do with Albini, because I'm not as much a fan of Last Splash. But no matter the producer or whatnot, a good song is a good song. Which is why I don't understand the Blink-182 fans when they're like, Yeah, Cheshire Cat is okay, but, like, take off your pants and jacket. Like, the recording quality on that is just amazing. Like, you like the auto-tune, huh? <laughs> you like the auto-tune? Like... This is why Nevermind was never Nirvana's, like, best album, because it sounds too overproduced. And in the words of Don Frusciante, it's punk for the masses. We don't appreciate punk for the masses. We appreciate punk for the punks. But anywho, number seven is fortunately gone. Now, the bass ain't bad, probably one of my favorite parts of the song, which is actually really rare for me to take much interest into the bass part, but you gotta thank Josephine Wiggs for that. And then Iris, it sounds very punk, me likey. Now, I didn't actually like it before, but then I listened to it this morning and I was like, well, like, what? Like, this is not bad. Like, I love the vocals where she's like, hour by hour, like, that adds so emotion to the song. And then the Genius, you know that the, the Genius website where it has, like, lyrics for a song? Someone on there said that it's a reference to a book called The Iris Sleeps Over. Never read it. Don't know what it's about. But anyway, I thought I'd mention that. And then opened. Robin flies again. Love that bass line. It really adds, like, suspense. It really makes the whole song, in my opinion. It wouldn't be the same without it. And then number 10, only in threes. I kind of feel like they say the word O oh too much in this song. Like, just a little bit. Like, it's not a bad song, but if the word O oh is no kind of chorus for Weezer in Perfect Situation, we can't really give the Breeders a special treatment now, can we? I mean, you kind of can, because everything after, like, um, the Blue Album and Pinkerton Weezer, I really just... I'm not trying to be one of those guys, but I really... I just, anyway, Limehouse, number 11. 
I like the different vibe. Like, I'm kind of confused overall. Like, what is a Limehouse? Apparently, it's about Sherlock Holmes being in an opium den. Weird flex, but okay. I never would have thought about writing something about that, but... <sighs> Metal Man. The album comes to a close. I like Metal Man. It has some Spanish guitar. And as it closes, it changes the vibe with, like, powerful dynamics. Like, sometimes it's like a folk song, you know? And then sometimes it's like, whoa, you could have gave me a warning. I'm wearing headphones here. But that just has, like, character, you know? Like the like the loud, quiet, loud that Nirvana snapped from Pixies, uh, you know? I like that song. So anyway, if I could just, at the end, take a minute to talk about the album art. I love it. Like, if I listened to purely rap music, didn't know what a guitar was, I might pick up the CD anyway, because, like, the cover just really makes a statement. Now, the Breeders Big Album, Last Splash, is okay, but the album art is nowhere near as spectacular. Like, I never thought Nevermind was Nirvana's best album, but you gotta admit, the cover just makes such a statement. Like, you can interpret it in so many different ways. But that being said, I do like the cover of Incesticide more.